Hey, everybody, welcome. We'll get started in just a moment. Uh, it looks like everybody is flowing in. Um, while everybody's flowing in, um, I'll do a quick introduction in about 30 seconds. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. Uh, we'll get started in just a moment. Thank you for attending. We're, we're humbled to have you here. As, as you guys uh, jump on, um, I will, I'm, my name's Scott Wayman. I'm the CEO and founder at Kangaroo Time. Uh, we thank you all for joining us with uh, Hani Welshansky. Um, she's the CEO of the School of Excellence. Um, again, we'll get started in just a moment. 30 more seconds and we'll call it good. We'll call it a go. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first of all, please, 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 if you have not joined our, our Facebook group, it's called uh, KT Childcare Connect. We will share a link and a follow-up email after, after the session. Um, if you do have any questions, please enter it into the Q&A area. Um, just to let you know, your microphone and cameras are off. Only panelists are able to speak during the webinar. A recording will be shared after the webinar. Um, and on certificates, we are able to offer certificates only for those who are registered. So they will be sent in a follow-up email. Um, Hani, very glad to have you here. Um, I'm excited to introduce you. Uh, Hani's an early education leadership coach and CEO of School of Excellence. Her leadership program is designed to help early childhood directors build a school of excellence, a collaborative culture, and create an environment that fosters the growth of teachers as leaders. She recently launched her Ripple Effect TV channel on YouTube. Please guys, go and subscribe and follow. Um, I'll be an upcoming guest. We've got a session planned very soon. Yeah. But with that said, I'm gonna get out of the way. Hani's got a hard stop at the top of the hour. And then from there, I've got some really important announcements to make. I'm looking forward to this. Thanks, honey. It's all you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, so much for having me. It was such an honor to visit you earlier last month. So um, I'm looking forward to this incredible continued relationship. So I want to get off the start by saying just a quick 30-second intro about who I am, and then we'll dive right into today's training. So my name is Connie Wolshansky, and I live right here in Brooklyn, New York, which has become a ground zero for everything that's happening right now in the world. Um, and two weeks ago, I actually started displaying symptoms for COVID-19, and um, I was diagnosed a couple days later um, with coronavirus, and I had about eight days of working through all the challenging symptoms that come with the virus, specifically on day four and day five, really difficulty breathing and just walking to the other side of my apartment and reading a book to my toddler was beyond exhausting. Um, and so I feel extremely fortunate and grateful to be on the other side, uh, to be able to be speaking. My voice is still not where it, it, um, it used to be, but definitely on the other side. So I'm really fortunate and grateful to be here today. So today's training, um, oh, I missed that one part. I'm also a mom of four little kids. I have a two-year-old, a four, five-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a nine-year-old on the other side of this wall uh, right here. So you might hear them throughout this, uh, throughout this training. So today I wanna get started with our topic, which is all about sustaining your positive culture and maintaining brand loyalty during this time. I know that in the last 16 to 17 days, anyone that is on here, who is an owner or director has been 
really, really focused on all of the tactical and strategic decisions that you needed to make around opening, closing, layoffs, furlough, uh, furlough, SBA loans, um, the stimulus package. Like you really kept your eyes peeled on all of the different rules and regulations that are involved with keeping your child care center open or running or what happens when you close. Now, one of the things that are really critical to understand as an owner and as a director is your role isn't just in those pillars of operating and leading a center. The rule number one in building a culture and a school of excellence is that you, yes, you who are sitting right here on this webinar or watching the replay, are at the epicenter of the ripple effect. And so I'm gonna draw this out for you real quickly because when you understand this concept, you will be making smarter, faster, and more strategic decisions. And right now, I want you to write down on a piece of paper in front of you, indecision is going to cost you big time. And so understanding how to make the right decisions as a CEO of your company, and if you're not the CEO, if you're the directors making decisions, is going to be critical to the, to the sustenance of your school, and if you're even gonna be able to reopen. You have to be able to make decisions. And sitting on decisions doesn't make them better. You have to know to filter them through the right decision matrix. So let's understand what the ripple effect is about, okay? So the ripple effect is a concept that I created several years ago. And it's three simple circles. At the center of the ripple effect is the school leader. So whether you're live and you are the owner, whether you're an executive manager, a regional director, the director, assistant director, doesn't matter. You're the school leader, you're at the center, okay? The second circle are the teachers and your other admin staff. So um, assistant directors, office managers, um, anyone else, uh, any of those other people that work in the center. And the final layer are the parents and the community that are within your company within your child care center. And lastly, out here are the kids. And so some of you might be saying, what? The kids are at the, at the end? Yes. And here's why. This is another great quote to write down. Your school culture, everything that you have in your school is an effect of your daily behaviors, actions, and routines, which means your decisions about how you're going to spend your day what your habits and routines are gonna be, what you allow into your brain, are all impacting the teacher, the staff, the parents, and the kids. So, if we look at the concept of the ripple effect, and we bring it into the current times that we're living in right now, that means that whatever you're doing after this webinar, whatever you've done before this webinar, impacts your brand, your school brand, and the culture that you've worked so hard to create. It also means that your decision to skip breakfast or eat breakfast is going to impact the teachers, the parents, and the kids. And here's why. I'd love to see in the comments section, how many of you make great decisions when you're starving tired and thirsty? Let me know in the comments. Can I see the comments, by the way? I don't know if, as a panelist, can I see some of the comments coming in? Or we could have everybody choose the raise hand button. Um, the yes or no question, no? We could turn on the comments, yeah. Could we try? Okay, cool. I like getting some of the feedback. If we can, if it gets out of control, we'll turn it off. So let me know in the comments, how many of you make good decisions? Zero, yes. Starving, tired, thirsty, you get hangry, yes. Not me, I don't, exactly, hangry. So if we don't make good decisions, if we're tired, hungry, and thirsty, that means that the decision to eat breakfast is critical in the effect of the children in our country right now. The statistics that are out right now in the last week, and they may have been updated, and I'll go check it out, is child abuse is up by 
Just process that for a second for all childcare workers that are on here that have dedicated their life to children. Child abuse is up by 65%. Here's another statistic for you. Domestic abuse and violence is up by 81%. We have a responsibility to the children that has never ever gone away. It will always be your number one priority when you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night. The way you deliver on that promise now, the way you fulfill the promise that you made to little Sam and Max when they signed up for your school is going to change during this time. But the promise stays the same. The why stays the same. The delivery engine has to change which means that you at the epicenter of the ripple effect need to make decisions about, am I gonna eat breakfast today? Am I going to go for a walk outside for 30 minutes because it's been proven by science that movement and motion sends endorphins to your brain and actually makes you more creative and innovative, which means you'll be making smarter decisions as a CEO of the company? Are you gonna make the decision to turn your phone off at a certain time of the evening so you get quality sleep so your brain isn't fried now for all those of you that are laughing to themselves oh, sleep who has time for sleep now winston churchill who was a world leader during world war ii not not world war coronavirus world war ii has pictures of him in his vacation home running in the grass with the sunset with his dog during World War II when bombs were flying everywhere, he took vacations. And when people were asking him, how are you on vacation when the world is at war? He said, if I don't let my brain rest, how am I going to make smart choices and strategic moves? You all know that your best ideas come when you're well rested, when you're functioning, but we're like, no, I don't have time to eat. I don't have time to sleep. I don't have time to shower. I gotta go, I gotta, there's a war out there. I gotta go, I gotta go. But it's hurting your school. So here's the lens I want you to operate from because I know where your hard point, I know where your pain points are. I know where that hot spot is. It's the kids. We care about the kids. So here's what you need to tell yourself. When you're making yourself that delicious smoothie in the morning and scrambled eggs and you're saying, I don't have time, say, I'm eating scrambled eggs for the kids. I'm drinking the smoothie for the kids. I'm going to sleep tonight because I care about the kids. I'm going to take a walk because I care about the kids. If you don't care about yourself, but you care about the kids, use that as your why. I don't care. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you actually do the activity that gets the result, that gets to the place of performance. And the place of performance now is leading strategically. That's the place of performance. Okay. So we're gonna go through a little exercise right now because I don't wanna just feed you information. I want you to leave this webinar smarter and more confident in the decisions that you're going to make after this. Because tips and tricks and tactics, we got them on Google. But if you know how to make decisions and you know how to filter things properly, you're golden. And that's what we're gonna do here. So take a piece of paper and a pen or take out your iPhone and use the note section, whatever you want. And I want you to write down, what are five things that when you do them, you operate at your peak? I'll repeat that one more time. Write down, and for, I'd love to see some of the comments also so people can get ideas, but also write down on a piece of paper, what are five things that when you do them, you operate at your peak? So let me tell you some of mine. And some of them are still the same now, even through COVID-19, but pre-COVID-19, swimming was a key activity for me. So I would go swimming once a week, in the pool that was about 15 minutes from our house here in Brooklyn, even when it was freezing and below zero, I went swimming. Indoor pool, you can go swimming. That helped me operate at my peak. Waking up at five o'clock in the morning, gratitude, meditation, planning my day, eating breakfast before the kids wake up. 
all peak performance activities. Okay, get up, get dressed, morning, walk outside, painting, amazing. Make a list of your top five, okay? Those are gonna become your daily metrics. At the end of every day, you're asking yourself, did I do them? Because here's what I know, if you didn't, your decision-making that day was not at 100%. Now, for those of you that wanna take it even further, I have my daily metrics on a card and it sits on my desk in front of my eyeballs all day long. We all know that environment is key to performance. So what are you putting on your desk? I got water to stay hydrated. I got my daily metrics right in front of me, so it's right in front of my eyeballs. I got my planner here, so I know exactly what I have to tackle every single day. And my food's in the kitchen. And I go take breaks. All right, give me a thumbs up or just raise your hand if you're clear and you're good on the top five activities that you need to do to be your peak to be at the center of the ripple effect and know that key decisions and sustaining the culture that you want is going to come from you eating a tuna sandwich in the middle of the day if that's what you like. Beautiful. Look at this. I love it. Everyone's hands are going up. Good stuff. Okay. Now, in nature, everything's got an opposite. So just like we've got our what are activities that we know help us operate at our peak? We need to know what are your triggers? What sends you into a tailspin? And here's why. If we don't know those triggers that send us into the tailspin, when we're in that mode, we don't know how to pull ourselves out. And then what happens is you get a call from a key player, from a stakeholder, from a parent, from a teacher, from a critical decision you have to make that you don't have time to push off. But you're in the tailspin. So you're making a decision with your head in the sand. And that, those are never the best decisions. So just like we gotta know how we operate at our peak, we have to know what our triggers are. So let me know in the comments and also put it on a piece of paper. What are your top three triggers that when this thing happens, you're in a tailspin, or you start going down, or you're angry, or pissed, or frustrated, or crying, or whatever? What sends you into the tailspin? Because then you also know how to try to avoid those activities, right? So for me, one of the things that really just, well, it's not just sets me off, but it just, it, it completely disrupts my day is... I, I, I like checking in and knowing where our community is holding in relation to the virus because unfortunately I have some really good friends that have lost parents and my husband lost one of his mentors and it's, it's really been rough here in New York City. It's not easy. Um, but I still want to know what's going on. The problem is I can't check in the middle of the day or in the morning who died that day because that's going to throw me off for the rest of the day. So I check it, but I check it at the end of the day. Um, and then I have time for myself to recuperate, take myself, my time to whatever I want to mourn or whatever it is. I have that time um, so that by the morning I'm fresh and I'm ready for the day. Um, so that's for me, just personally, I'm sharing with you just what's happening right now in real time, what's going on here. Um, but I'm a leader of a business and I'm a leader of a family and even when I'm being pulled down into crazy grief, I still have to stand back up again the next day. And so I need to be aware of what's sending me down so I know how to rise back up again because I can't stay down for two weeks. I got to get back up. And so do you. And you can do it. Okay. Hey, Alex. I like seeing people here that I know. Okay. Alex, reading a mean email. Yes. Money problems. Family concerns. If I didn't clean up the house. Nagging. Okay, just so you know, where's my chart? Okay, later today, you guys should all follow me on Facebook because later today, I'm almost done putting this together, but it's a beauty. It's every day of the week, all the responsibilities that have to be done in the house, and my husband and I go through it, and we block and tackle what each of us are going to do that specific day, and then what we're assigning to our kids. Yes, even my five-year-old does stuff from this chart because if any of you want to know what you're busy with all day 
and don't realize what you're doing, but you're exhausted, this is it. Cleaning the toilet, cleaning the sink for the hundredth time, all this girls, ladies, men, gentlemen, all the people. Um, so make sure to follow me on Facebook because I'm going to be posting that a little bit later today. A little sidetrack over there. Um, but you know, that's what we're doing now. Okay. Changes made to the last minute. Okay, great. So with these triggers, on the other side, you're going to write, okay, when I get an unexpected call from my kid's school, which one of my peak performance activities can I do to combat what I'm feeling and pick myself back up again? Let me draw work here. Sorry, it's New York. There's always noise. Um, so which of the flip side is it going to be, right? So when this happens, what do you need to do on the other side to pick yourself back up again? Um, I need to see everything organization and clean. Yes. Okay. So that's the next part of the activity. You wrote your trigger. Now take your activities that help you operate at peak performance and match them up. Okay. So now that we focus a little bit on ourselves and understanding that when we operate at our peak, we can be the best leaders. Take a break, it's gonna be yourself. Yeah, it's all gonna be okay. Now let's look at what are some of the action steps we need to take to connect with our teachers better and our families. Because when you're running a business, for those of you that are the owners, we need to set metrics that are tied to outcome goals, right? Numbers is the language of business. And so, yes, you're running a labor of love, but if there's no money, there's no mission. So everything that you do in the school is tied to a metric or a key performance indicator. But when your goals change, so if your school is closed, you have new metrics. And if we don't set new metrics and new outcome goals, then we're doing activity that we think is taking us one place, but we're not heading there. We're actually going here. So we're doing activity that isn't getting us where we're trying to go. And that's where so much of the anxiety and frustration and guilt and shame is coming from right now, because we're engaging with activity that isn't getting us to where we need to go right now. So why are our goals changing? Well, your goals are changing because maybe you're not doing five tours a day right now. You're probably not doing any tours. So we need to set new outcome goals. Now, give me a yes in the comments. If in the last two weeks you thought to yourself, what am I supposed to be doing now? What am I supposed to be focusing on? Like, where is my time supposed to be going now? What am I supposed to be doing? Yes, I hit the nerves. Okay, good. That means, that means I'm doing my job and I'm staying closest to the struggle and we're staying, oh, my hand's all dirty. My eraser was broken by my toddler in the last couple of days. So, you know, one of the things that are gonna happen as a result of all this madness is I told my husband we're gonna have to do a new painting job because I think my house has more marker and pen on the walls than on all the thousands of paper that we've used already. I love the trees, but we gotta keep our kids entertained. Okay, so what are we supposed to focus on? There we go. So I was a toddler teacher for eight years, which means I love to draw and make pictures and do all kinds of things. Um, so I like to make models like you saw with ripple effect. But one of the other models that we have is something called the pyramid of excellence. I wish I could tell those people to stop drilling. All right, pyramid of excellence, there we go. And the pyramid of excellence is our proprietary diagnostic of how we help leaders understand where they are in the journey to building your school of excellence. So at the very bottom, we have survival. Right on top of survival, we have disorder. Yeah. 
I do not know how to spell. That is what I do not know how to do. Survival disorder. The next phase is integrated. The next phase is aligned. And then we have legacy. So we have survival at the very bottom. We have disordered, integrated, aligned, and legacy. Now, at each phase of growth in your school, and it doesn't matter what kind of school you have. You can have 10 kids, 100 kids, 500 kids, Reggio inspired, Montessori, charter school, faith-based, not, it doesn't matter where you live in the planet. Any state, any continent, any country, any province. Every single school is going to work through these five stages to build and sustain excellence. Now, you can hear the drills. Amazing, so it's just me, beautiful. Thank you. At every stage, there are three things that you will always be working on. Please remember these three things. Anytime you feel frustration, if it's with one of these three things, it's okay. Because these three things you will always be working on. Always, 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 as long as you're operating your center. You ready? You're always working on systems. You are always working on communication. And you are always working on leadership. So if you've got a communication struggle, welcome girlfriend, we're all working on communication. If you have a systems issue, we're all working on systems always. And you're always working on your leadership. Now, at every stage of growth, I'm not gonna go into this now, it's gonna take too much time. But at every stage, there are specific systems an activity that you need to be working on to get you to the next phase. If you don't work on those systems properly and have them truly solidified, then you'll go to the next phase, you'll hang out there for a little bit, you'll have like a little fling with the disordered phase or you'll have a little fling with integrated, but it doesn't last very long and then integrated breaks up with you and then you slide right back down to survival. Because you didn't do the proper groundwork when you were in the survival stage. Now, when we're in a wartime economy, okay, this isn't a recession yet. This is wartime economy. That's what's happening right now. You're a wartime CEO. We all flung back to survival. No matter where you are, everyone flies right back to survival. Now, in order to ensure that survival does not become a habit, okay? Because when we engage in survival activity for too long, survival becomes a habit. It's just like, this is just the way it is. We're always drowning. We don't want survival to become a habit. But first we have to know what we need to focus on. All right, let me pause for a second. Give me a quick thumbs up in the comments. Let me just make sure everyone's following along so far because there's a lot of um, contextual information, but it's very powerful if you understand it properly because it can really help you make the right decisions. And that's what I care about more than anything right now. I want you to have the right tools to make the right decisions. Amazing. Okay. Beautiful. Mwah. Thank you. Yes. I'll explain disorder if I have some time. Right now, let's, let's just focus on survival. If anyone wants any more information on this, going to some of the resources that Genevieve will post at the end. You can follow us and, and we'll share more information with you. So in survival, let's talk about pre-COVID-19. There are three things you're working on in survival. Okay? You can write this down. One, who do you serve? Okay, who are your parents? Are you attracting faith-based families? Are you attracting, you know, only Christian families, only Jewish families? Are you attracting all people? Are you attracting people who want Montessori education? Who are you attracting? Okay, who? Who do you serve? Okay, number two, who are your staff? You're creating your hiring system. Who are you bringing into your company? Who are going to be the people, one of the key stakeholders in your company? Okay, so who is parents, who is staff? And lastly is what? What is your curriculum? 
Are you following a standardized curriculum? Are you going to be doing teaching strategies goals? Are you going to be doing your own curriculum? Or whatever. What's your curriculum? Okay. Now, all of you are right now back in survival. So even though some of our clients who work with us, some of them are in aligned or integrated, they're all back down here. So now let's work through the exercise together. I'm gonna to slow down. I'm a New Yorker, I speak fast, but I wanna, I wanna hold your hand, let's walk through this. Okay. So if we're back to the question of who do we serve? Who are the majority of the, what are the percentages of the types of families in your school. So I want you to think for a second, write this down on a piece of paper, because you'll go get the data from your child, from your uh, CRM database or whatever databases you have, okay? Who are the parents? Are majority of your parents married? Single parents, divorced, shared custody? Are they still paying tuition? Are some of them on subsidies? Who are the parents that you are serving right now? Okay, so write that down. Because you're not going to have all the information right now in front of you unless you've done this work. The other question you want to ask yourself, and I want you to let me, all of you know this in the comments, tell me, who are the parents that we're going to let take rent in our head? Who are the parents that are going to take mental space in your brain? Are they going to be the parents that are rallying behind you and supporting you and sending you love email and encouragement and gratitude? Are they going to be the one parent out of 500 that sent you hate mail? Who are the parents that you are going to focus on? Let me know in the comments, because I know intellectually you all know the answer. But emotionally, and our pride, and our stupid egos, go for the other one, right? Because that's human nature. We all have it. We've all got egos. We've all got pride. But the more that we focus on the positive parents, the better your life is going to be. Okay? Focus on those people, not on the jerks. I'm the nice people. Okay, good. Look, I, the fact that you know you need to let it go is already 80, per, you're already 80% there. Because now you know this is, this is the goal, right? This is where you're heading. So that's the first question we're answering. The next question we're answering, sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work through each one and then we'll, we'll give some strategy. Um, So, sorry, going back over here, I'm gonna share strategy first and then I'll move on to the next one. I actually, actually think it'll work better that way. Okay, so with the parents that you're focusing on, okay, if you have parents that your state right now or your community, your city is in lockdown mode, like by us here in New York, okay, people are only allowed to leave the house for essentials or for food, okay, which means that most of people who live here in New York, the dad is home like 20% of the week. He sees the kids maybe 30 to 45 minutes in the evening and then on the weekends. And now all of a sudden, he needs to spend 10 hours a day with his kids. And it's like, what the hell do I do with these people? Like, I don't know how to change a diaper. I don't know how to play a board game with you. I don't know how to have a conversation with you. I want to watch the news. I want to check the sports. You, you need a break? You need to take a shower? I don't know how to do that. And all of a sudden, you have strife in the relationship. Not because they're not a great couple. They could be an amazing couple. They can have a great marriage. Every single marriage is going to be tested right now. The best marriages in the world are going to be under fire right now because none of us have been trained of how to deal with this time. But here's the beauty and here's the silver lining in this. You're the school leader. They need these resources more than they need the 1,000 fun ideas to do on Pinterest. They need ideas. How do I tell my husband I need a break? How do I have a conversation with him and ask him to help with lunch? And say, I can't cook three meals a day, every single day, for 10 humans. Real talk, exactly. What other resources do they need? How do I tell my child to come to the lunch table without yelling at him? How do I get them dressed before 3 p.m. without getting into a massive argument? That's what they need right now. 
So before, you used to give resources to the teachers of how to run their classrooms better, of how to play intentionally with the children, of how to ask higher order thinking questions, of how to set up their centers. Children are still your priority. The way you're gonna show up is very different. And I promise you, your parents will thank you. None of them are gonna come out and say, hey, I need help in my marriage. But they will watch that video. They will read that email. We are all consuming content at an all-time high for distraction, for whatever it is, or for, for training, or for learning. But we're all consuming content relevant to what we need at this time. Okay? Makes sense? Just give me a yes in the comments. Want to see who's following along, who's processing. Okay. Good. Good stuff. So. Let's move on to the staff, okay? Because when you reach out to the parents and you give them those training, those resources, and you get on a phone with them, okay? And you say, hey, Sarah, it's Miss Amy calling. Um, I just wanted to call to see how you're doing, how is your morning, and more importantly, I really wanna know, what are you most proud of yourself today for? What have you done in the last 24 hours that makes you proud? And let her answer that question. And then if you still have a little time, go to the next question and say, what have you done for self-care today? What have you done just to take care of you? You call up every mom and get through every parent throughout the week or the next two weeks. That is brand loyalty. That's what we call talk triggers or what I call playground gossip. Okay? Parents aren't going to the playground now and yakking, yakking about your school, but they are talking to each other and they are in Facebook groups and they are in WhatsApp chats and they're still yakking to each other. They're going to yak about you and the fact that you're checking in with them. Now, quick pro tip for those that are making phone calls and are like, oh my God, I'm going to call every parent. I'm going to be on the phone for like three hours. Well, you know, you get on the phone and you say, hey, Miss Amy. It's, uh, it's Sarah, it's Connie. Um, I'm doing quick five minute check-ins with all the moms today because I want to know how everyone's doing. So just quick five minute chat. Just want to see how you're doing. You lay the groundwork twice, quick five minute chat. You'd set the precedent in the beginning of the call. Guess how long this call is? Five minutes. And then you set the boundary. Good, 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 good. Glad it's resonating. Okay, let us go to... Let's go to the teachers. All right, who are your staff? So we're going to the who, who is the staff, all right? Good, I'm so glad you enjoyed this, Ariana. So at the foundation of Schools of Excellence, and this is gonna be one of the resources that we created for you all, is the Gratitude Matrix, which is another part of our proprietary process of how to build and sustain Schools of Excellence, which is the foundation of gratitude. Whether you are opened, closed, doing e-learning, whatever you're doing right now, your staff need to hear from you. And they need to hear from you in a way that lets them know, I see you, I value you, and I hear you. Three things that we all need right now. So how are you gonna do that? If you're open and you're doing some kind of e-learning platform or um, if you're open and teachers are still coming in, we want to give specific gratitude. Now we have an entire process on this, but I'm gonna share with you one uh, tip that we have. And if you want more of that, go to our YouTube channel. We've got training on it, De download the PDF. We've got more resources on all of this stuff uh, for you all. But the tip I want you to walk away with today is that Writing an email that says, hey everyone, I'm so grateful for all of you, I love you all, you're all amazing, thanks for all the hard work that you're doing, you know, keep it up, have a great weekend, whatever. It's great. And emails are great and say gratitude. You know what's even better? When you take your phone and you hit the record button on your phone and you say, hey Carly, it's Sarah checking in. I just wanted to share how grateful I was that you were the opener this morning. I know that it's not easy to be the first person to walk into the building and have to re-sanitize the place one more time. I really appreciate the fact that you're waking up at 5.30, coming in at 6 a.m., greeting all the little kids, talking to the angry parents that are there in the morning. You've been phenomenal. And we are so grateful to have you as part of the team. You've been a tremendous asset. 
And I just want to tell you thank you. And I really appreciate what you're doing and wishing you an amazing day. And that's it. And you don't say, oh, and by the way, can you do X, Y, and Z? No, you just paint your whole gratitude. Gratitude is gratitude. Feedback is feedback. Task lists are task lists. They're three separate things. That's why they have three separate words. Gratitude is gratitude. Share your gratitude. Write a card. Record a voice memo. Record a video. Send an email that's specific to them. And then send them their task list also. It's not like you can't hold them accountable to responsibilities. But it's two separate things. Now, here's your litmus test to know if it's intentional or, or uh, specific enough. If you can copy and paste that and send that to the teacher next door, it's that. If you can't copy and paste it, that means that it's specific enough. That means that it can only go to that teacher. Good? Give me a thumbs up in the comments. We're all clear on the difference of specificity of gratitude. While I take a drink of water. Okay. Amazing, amazing, okay. Good, Denise, I'm so glad. You're thinking all of them, but not individually. Beautiful, so you're already doing 50% of the work. Now just switch it up. You're gonna see a massive result from it. You have no idea how far this is gonna take you. Awesome sauce here, beautiful. Okay, good. Now, let's go into checking in with staff. For those of you that have had to make the really difficult decision of having to put teachers on furlough or lay people off completely, that is not an easy decision that anyone had to make, and it sucks. Let's just say it as it is, okay? I'm a New Yorker, it sucks. But this will end, and you will, God willing, reopen. And you will need these teachers to come back. And you've built relationships with them over time. Some of you have had these staff for months or even years. We want to check in with them. But how? How do we check in with our staff? Well, very similar to how we check in with parents. You miss Amy. I want to know what you've done today for self-care. What have you done to take care of you? What are you proud of yourself for? No one's asking them those questions. And when you're the leader and you ask them that, you start the ripple effect. Because when they feel good about themselves and when they have that level of confidence, they're gonna give that to their spouse, to their own child, to some of the families in their classroom. Just the same thing, same phone script. Hey Leanne, send voice memos to my staff on Friday, just checking in. Many responded with surprise that even during this hard time I was taking care of them. Leanne, that right there, Leanne's part of our director's inner circle. Leanne, right, that is like the best indicator of sustaining the positivity in your school, in sustaining a culture of excellence, and continuing with loyalty from your staff or your brand. So kudos. So lastly, what is the curriculum? Okay. Hey, Tammy. So the last thing is, what is the curriculum, right? So until now, your curriculum has been pretty much, you know, the toddler teachers teach this, the preschool teachers teach that, whatever it is, right? Now the curriculum has to shift. And so as the leader, you need to make decisions. What is the content you're going to send home? Are you going to send home content and training to help the parents? Are you going to send home content and training for them to give to the kids? And you could do both. It's not either or. Are you going to send home content and curriculum for teachers? What, what avenue are you going to take? And whatever avenue you take, create stellar content in relation to that and build it out. Okay. And we have resources and stuff like that. You can follow us and ask us for, for additional resources and stuff. But this is the, bringing everything together here and then we'll, we'll I think we're opening up the floor for Q&A is we want to maintain and sustain our positive cultures. You're at the center of the ripple effect. Take care of yourself. Know how you operate at peak performance and have a plan for the triggers. Okay. And we're all in survival. So who are you serving? How are you taking care of them? How are you taking care of your staff? And what is the curriculum? 
And I truly hope that from today's training, from the context, from just the frameworks that I've given you, you are that much more equipped to be a phenomenal CEO during this time. So thank you so much uh, for your time. Hey, honey, thank you. That was amazing. I, I think like you said, we've got about uh, 14 minutes for Q&A. Mm -hmm. and you have a hard stop right at the top. So, um, honey, I think there's a Q&A section and there, there are also questions coming in via chat. Guys, we opened up the chat so that you could all see each other's chat entries. I hope that helps. Yeah, um, yeah looking forward to some great questions. Okay, so Genevieve, you're gonna ask the questions, like to, uh, just walk me through how we're gonna do it. Yeah, so that's the first one. So Teresa asks, how do I help my teachers stay moving forward? Great question. So the first question you need to ask yourself is what does moving forward mean? So the first thing I'm gonna do right now that's gonna help everyone, um, and it's gonna help all of you answer all your questions is to follow another one of our proprietary processes, which is called the PAR framework. So before you ask a question, you wanna ask yourself, what is the problem I'm trying to solve? So when you say moving forward, what does that mean? What is the actual problem or um, what do you want them to actually do? What are you trying to solve, okay? A stands for action. What actions have you already taken towards solving that problem? So if you wanted your teachers to move forward, what have you done already towards solving that problem? And R stands for routine. What are the new routines that you want this person to do moving forward? Um, so for those of you that are going to ask questions, filter it through this process, right? The problem I'm trying to solve is X or the challenge that I have right now is X. So I'll ask anyone else that's putting additional questions, just filter it through that framework so I can answer as many questions as possible during this, you know, 12 minute time frame. Um, okay. And Christina asks, where would you recommend we find resources, articles, et cetera, to help support parents and teachers in this unprecedented time? Yes, so we actually created a whole uh, resource library for parents um, on how to talk to their kids and how to take care of themselves and how to work through limiting beliefs and mindsets and marriage. Um, so you can email us if you want those resources. We're not putting them out in the public, but um, if you want more information, you can email us. Um, and I can put my email uh, in the comment section. Awesome. Any other questions? So I see you from Denise. My center is currently closed. My staff are continuing to get paid. They're working on many things from home. I'd love some ideas to keep them engaged with the families. A five minute check and call is great. We're also posting videos on Facebook. Okay, Denise, I love that. Um, to keep engaged with families. Here's what I want you to be mindful of during this time. Be really clear on what is the expectation because the challenge is, is teachers get extremely frustrated when, oh, I think I sent it to all panelists. That's why, LOL. There we go. Okay, CW um, The frustration from staff come when we give them an expectation that they don't understand how to do. And so in their mind, they think, oh my God, Denise just asked me to do like another 15 hours of work. We're not getting paid for this. I have all my kids at home. How the hell does she want me to do all of this? Yada, yada, yada. So really important to be specific around, okay guys, here's the three ways that you can stay engaged with families. One. You could do this. Two, you could do this. Three, you could do this. Or four, suggest your own option. Um, make sure that each one of your options take 10 minutes or less. If they take longer, you're not doing it right. So come back. I'll give you some coaching. We'll make sure it fits this time frame. Because when a teacher sees, oh, Denise only wants me to do something that takes five minutes a day, I do that. Great. Now your likelihood of all your teachers doing that is shot up like this. So your need to chase people down and micromanage and hold them accountable just went down like that, which is great. Because now you have more sanity. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful for you, Denise. Um, okay. So Kim asks, what are other ways I can connect with parents other than text phone calls? Um, why don't you want to connect through text or phone calls is the first question I would ask. What is, what is the hesitation in using those platforms? And then I can give some other ideas. Just 
Should I go to the next one, um, Jen? Yeah, let's go to the next one. So okay. Alex says, our staff was laid off and many of our lead leads want to continue to work to connect with parents and children. It's easy to give them gratitude for that. How do I make sure that those who choose not to engage at this time are seen and heard and valued? So are you making it mandatory for these teachers to, um, sorry, are you making it optional for teachers to engage with families during this time? Because if it's optional and you give gratitude to those teachers, that's great. Um, if it's not mandatory, meaning they're not, meaning they're not getting, uh, it's not part of their salary, not getting paid or whatever it is, um, checking in with them through like the phone, the phone script, like I was saying, like just what are you proud of? What have you done for self-care? Um, is really, is super valuable and important. Um, and that is definitely a way that they can feel seen during this time. Um, so then somebody asks, how do I get higher ups to subscribe to this model? Sometimes teaching has to happen from the bottom up. Yeah. So again, using the PAR framework, what is the problem you're trying to solve? So with the higher ups not understanding how this works, how does that affect the kids? Because ultimately that's what we all care about. So how does it affect the children by them not getting buy into this model? Once you understand that, it's a lot easier for you to come in and explain your proposition. And Ariana asks, what do we do when families are feeling overwhelmed with all the emails yes. and inability to focus on one task? Great. Um, I love that question, Ariana. Thanks for asking. So when families are feeling that overwhelm, we want to always tap into where does overwhelm come from? Overwhelm comes from being overcommitted, underperforming, not enough time to do things, and comparison. Okay, when parents start to come or when anyone compares themselves to someone else and they're not measuring up to what their ideal of what being a parent is during this time, they have shame. Shame typically breeds guilt and anger. That's why you're getting hate mail all the time. Okay, for anyone that's getting hate mail, it's coming from that place. Shame, guilt, overwhelm, stress, anxiety, all breeds anger, which spews out as hate. So the more that you connect with parents and relate to them and show them that they're seen and heard and it's going to be okay um, and, and explaining to them this next time I'm going to talk about in a minute, the less hate mail you're going to get. That, that's like a direct correlation right there with the metric. Now, for parents that are feeling, does anyone hear the background music? My daughter's playing her little doll that she got. Thank you, sweetheart. The background music's great. Can you move it away? Thank you. Um, so for parents that are feeling overwhelmed, an email that should go out today that you craft needs to say the resources and tips and tricks that we're giving you are there as a bonus to help you. The first thing that you need to worry about, not worry about, the first thing that you need to think about as a mom right now and as a, a family unit is your mental sanity. Is everyone showering? Is everyone brushing their teeth? Is everyone eating? Is everyone drinking water? Is everyone getting movement and exercise? And is everyone sleeping? That's it. If you're doing all those things, you are super mom, period. You are not super mom when you're doing Pinterest, okay? Here's what is so important to explain to the parents. In every single person's life, something has to give. No one can juggle all the balls. No one. So when you see a Pinterest perfect mom, something's giving somewhere else. And that's why you have to stop the stupid comparison game. Decide what are your priorities and what is never going to give for you. So for someone, it means I'm never going to give in this area. Great. Well, then you got to know, girl, in this area, it's going to give. Because you, no one has 100% to give in every single area of their life. It just doesn't work like that. We're, we're limited human beings with limited resources. Uh, and the more that you understand that as the leader, the easier it is to explain that to the parents. Sorry, one second, the music's really distracting. Hey, hey. No, oh, thank you. She left it at the door as background music for me. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, honey. So harping back to what Kim asked about, um, you know, using texts and phone calls, uh, she clarified and said, you know, we're busy during the day. We cannot always connect with them um, in other ways. And she's just looking for other ways to stay connected with families during the shutdown. So, okay. So repeat it. So she's busy during the day. 
Yeah, they're just looking for like other, you know, ideas of ways that they can connect with families and, and children. Well, I guess the definition would be, why are you connecting? Is it to show that you care? Is it just so that they don't forget who you are? Like, are, are you connecting from like a marketing standpoint, like just continuing your marketing strategy? So if you're connecting because you care and you really want to be there, then you have to relook at the way you're spending your time during these days and block out 60 minutes a day to call 10 or 15 families. Um, but if the reason of connecting is just like, I just want to stay top of mind, well, you could just run Facebook ads or you could just, I don't know, share, like, you know, repurpose other people's content. Like, it really depends on the outcome of the connection. So for me, I want to connect with all of my clients. I have a 90 minute time block every day that I call clients. I don't got a lot of time either, but that is a critical activity that I have deemed as important during this time. Um, so I'm making the time for that. So hope that helps answer your question. Yeah, honey, thank you so much. We'll wrap up now because I know you have a hard stop at three. Yeah. This was amazing. And you can post some more of the additional questions or stuff like that. I'm happy to go in later tonight and respond if anyone wants to. If you're okay with people posting some more of those questions under the thing, under the feed, so it could all be in one place. Yeah, absolutely. No, we'll, we'll cobble that together. Uh, we'll put it out. Um, we have a follow up email that goes out to everybody on on the uh, webinar. Um, so honey, thank you. I know you've got a hard stop and you don't want to be hangry on your next one. So you better yeah. get out of here. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so one of the themes that I saw, um, guys was um, communication and, and assuring that you have a tight loop of communication. Um, many of our customers are on the on the line, and we, we've talked to many of you about um, forgiving your fees for the months of April and May. We haven't made a formal announcement, and we'll talk to each of you about that, but we're here to help. Um, and those for, of you that aren't our customers, we'd be happy to um, to, to give you our, um, our chat uh, app for parents and for staff. Um, if any of you would be interested, contact us, let us know. We'll roll that out as, as soon as we can get to it. Um, but for many of you, one of the, the big I'm things- I'm gonna sign out, is that, is that okay, Scott? You're great, you're that great, honey. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank it was you. amazing. Follow up with us, we're here to answer any questions. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Thanks Jen. honey, have a good one. And for those of you uh, who weren't aware, tomorrow we'll be having our webinar de detailing all, all, the, uh, all the different pieces of the stimulus. So, so for many of us, um, including myself, uh, the, the CARES Act and, and the, the amount of money that's out there uh, to keep our businesses viable. I saw a few of you saying, hey, your teachers are at home. I know many of you have laid your teachers off. Um, but we'll be answering questions with our expert, Eric Sousa, tomorrow on how to properly navigate through the application process and what, what all the triggers are. Um, so we'd love to have you there. Again, reach out to myself and Genevieve on your interests as far as like deploying our, our app um, for, for, you know, the near future. We're here to help. Um, so, so the reason we're doing this is we don't plan on growing our business very much. Um, we decided that we were in crisis mode as a company um, and our customers were in crisis mode. So uh, we, we turned all our customer acquisition efforts and all our marketing spend and everything to getting you the resources you need to get through this time. So up and coming, uh, we'll be planning more content. So the, the next thing on the calendar is obviously the stimulus webinar tomorrow. And then beyond that, I think we need to get you guys some content on how to handle point of care. And, and, and if you do have staff and they're distressed, um, how we handle that. Um, for those of you that don't know, my wife's a nurse. Uh, she's she's uh, on the front lines and um, I see you all is on the front lines too. So um, we need to get you help and knowledge and um, access to supplies the things you need uh, to, to nurture and love on your families uh, in these times. Um, but more than anything, we're so humbled to have you here, to have you take time out of your day and join us. And uh, if you have any questions for us, reach out. Please sign up for the KT Child Care Connect group. Again, so many of you are, are, are supporting each other. 
uh, talking about when to close, how to communicate with parents. Um, and it's just, it's a great thing. So um, thanks again. We will see you tomorrow, hopefully, and reach out if you have any questions.